So you've just been laid off from your job, you've got a wife and kid at home, and you're in a new city. Does the thought occur to you to start a brand new business with your wife? Maybe not, but it's just the risk that Ethan and Stephanie Bull took in starting their pro-assisting remote assistance business. Listen in to today's interview and learn about what it took to get them started and what it's like to work together as a married couple. Hello, dreamers. Welcome to the Late Starters Club, giving you the inspiration, mindset, and tools you need to start something midlife and beyond. Remember, it's never too late to follow your dreams. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Late Starters Club podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Ball. I am here with Stephanie and Ethan Bull. I am excited because I uh, am just starting to get to know them. We were introduced through a past guest and really excited to connect and hear your stories. Stephanie and Ethan, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah. So a little bit about Stephanie and Ethan. They are, uh, they they have started Pro Assisting, which is a uh, or virtual executive assistance, right? Is there, or do you have a virtual and remote, right? We consider no. remote virtual. Um, okay. We feel that there's, there's a difference between a virtual assistant and a remote executive assistant, but yeah, I, we agree with you that it can be interpreted many yeah. different ways. Right. And actually, I was just, I think that's what I was doing. I was diving into that FAQ on your site on what was the difference between virtual and remote. And I thought that was really interesting. But full service professional executive assistance is basically the, the core offering there. And you guys have an amazing background. Um, Stephanie was the former executive assistant for J. Cruz CEO and CEOs of two multi-billion dollar hedge funds. And Ethan has had a background in hospitality and expert in the uh, executive assistance space and just lots of senior uh, positions out there. Um, and, and I think it's so amazing that you both partner together as partners and launched this business five years ago. So why don't you just walk us through a little bit of how that came about and how, what what was the impetus for starting this and starting this together? You want to go? Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, thanks again for having us. Uh, you know, frankly, we were serving in those roles and and what you mentioned at a very high level, living in New York City. I was there 20 years. Stuff was there almost 15. And then our second son came was coming along. Mm -hmm. In the oven, would you say? Yeah, yeah. I was pregnant. <laughs> in the oven. And we were like, we're going to sell our condo, quit our jobs, ditch our health care, and move six hours north of the city where I'm from and um, in Canandaigua, New York. It's one of the Finger Lakes. And when we landed here, we quickly realized that the term executive assistant means something in this kind of smaller market area. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I was off working at Rochester Regional Health in one of the few seats that was aligned with what we do and, and our, our compensation and our, our seniority, um, Stephanie was at home wrangling the kids. Yeah, I, I had never been a stay-at-home mom. Um, and all of a sudden I was like, okay, I, I'm not working. Um, yeah. This part of my identity is is no longer here. So, um, so do you want to go? Yeah, sure. That Well, a friend of ours reached out to Stephanie and she said, look, I know this Fortune 100 consultant. She needs a great assistant, uh -huh. um, which Stephanie is an amazing assistant, doesn't need full time and doesn't care where you live. Yeah. And um, that was in 2017. And that's mm -hmm. when we started doing a deep dive on the virtual assistant space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And frankly, it didn't align with what we do or mm -hmm. um our level of experience and right. so we saw this gap between where those virtual assistant services kind of drop off and a right. full-time assistant picks up and so that's where we yeah. put pro assisting yeah that is awesome and i love that because i mean i think for sure there's there's a need for that like a real high level but fractional you know like you kind of have but you have fractional and possibly full-time right you have kind of a uh, 
gamut of that. Is that correct? Um, we we have a couple of clients that we serve at almost a full level, but the majority right. of our clients take we we call them resources. We don't go at hours, so mm -hmm. usually it's um, each assistant um, has it's three clients. So okay, a third of the assistants. Oh, that's great, and and it's like you said, you see a gap in the market, you see a need, and you see you know you've got that expertise, you've got that um, that you know knowledge and visibility as an expert in the field and and it's it's exciting to say yeah we're gonna we're gonna launch this so that's that's amazing so walk me through some of the early times with launching this together like what was that like how did you take the leap between you know <laughs> um well, uh, well i i would start by saying i called stephanie and said i was let go uh oh. We decided what to basically bet my severance package on investing our own money into the business. And mm -hmm. right. we were going to make it work come heck or high water. Yeah. And it was, yeah. I, I will say just from the emotional, it was, um, it was one of the most challenging times and in, in our relationship, um, just, you know, doing this with like all, you know, all of a sudden, uh, no job you know um we have we do have some money in the bank but um it's like it felt like a clock to me and mm -hmm. um ethan is much more of the visionary in our relationship and i'm more of the governor like the more practical one um right and he's <laughs> so we complement each other but um i'm you know there were times when it was really scary i mean i remember being in my car and blasting music and crying you know on a few occasions but yeah. if it now, I mean, no regrets. So yeah. I kept telling her it was going to work. Yeah. And then and I'd I go like, in the okay. bathroom and say, is this really? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we had young kids. So it was. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was an adventure. <laughs> right. Right. So you've got all the challenges of finding time to launch this business with the young kids being married, you know, just so how would you navigate like turning those discussions on and off like you know i mean did it just like bleed into everything were you you know was that was that hard to kind of ha set some boundaries around work versus you know home or date night or whatever oh i think it's something that we have gotten better at i think actually overall our communication because we work together and run a business mm -hmm. together our communication has gotten so it's just improved so much and you know even our person at the personal level um mm -hmm. I feel like we're both um more I don't know I'm I'm more just honest about what I'm thinking and feeling and I think Ethan's the same yeah I I think we've we've gotten really good at switching contexts very mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. um Sometimes I'll get going on a rant or uh, an idea, and then she'll just say, we're on a date night. Can we just not go <laughs> yes. there? And then other yes. times we solve big problems on a date night. And it just, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, right. And I guess that can go back to the nature of assistant work. When you're at a really high level, you need to be able to shift contexts very quickly. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to have some sort of a personal life when you are working 24-7 for a principal, you need to be able to get mentally in and then out of what you're doing. And so right. I think it kind of translates a little. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And um, it's one thing about running the business is that it, it, people think, oh, you work for yourself. You must have it made. No, You know, it never turns <laughs> off. Um, yeah. So, so. I feel very grateful and and blessed that I get to, um, you know, greet my kids off the bus every afternoon, which so many people can't say. But at the same time, I'm I could easily be working um, at, you know, 10 o'clock on a Sunday night or we get a, a call from a client or assistant that is of an urgent matter and mm -hmm. that has to be dealt with. So, yeah, it 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 ebbs and flows. Yeah, right. Yeah. I. Yeah, I can imagine it just, I mean, there's so many benefits to 
working for yourself, but yeah, that um, definitely it is uh, it is an extra challenge as well. So what what would you guys say? You know, you've had so much experience. You know, you've been out in the corporate world. What has been some of the benefits with starting something in your midlife, as far as um, the experiences you've had, or or things that you lessons you've learned with it? What what has been helpful about getting started later? I I would say that the experience informed mm-hmm. our decision in terms of the business we we decided to create and the yeah. business model mm-hmm. that we decided to leverage. It wasn't like we put a dartboard on the wall and threw a dart and said, let's start a business and see where this dart ends up. We right. leveraged our corporate career experience, which mm-hmm. is over 40 years combined <laughs> um, into, into a service that we've kind of tried to productize and, and make mm-hmm. accessible and provide value to our partner assistants and provide Mm -hmm. value to our clients and to pro assisting and and we really feel we've kind of hit on that magic trifecta um that that kind of sets us apart yeah yeah that's awesome that is that is great i think it's i think starting i think it's just way better to start something when you're you're older i think you're just more um you're also more like even emotionally, even though, cause it is still a roller coaster, right? I am, yeah. I've definitely been the cry in my car kind of times as well, but you know, like it, it feels like it's going to be okay. We're going to, we're going to get through it. Exactly. Um, you have the benefit of perspective. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And was there ever, you know, as you were starting this up, was there ever kind of this like feeling of like total overwhelm, like this isn't working or we, you know, this isn't happening the way we thought or, you know, what have, what have you done to get through some of that really big overwhelm challenges and, um, times? I I've listened to my wife. Um, (laughs) she is very good at saying, look, you know, we'll lose a client, uh, especially in the beginning when, when that really mattered. Mm -hmm. Uh, from a from a monthly cash flow perspective, it was we'll we'll find another. Um, I you know, I think going back even to the previous question, it, it was really we built our business to basically fill ourselves up with clients, mm. and then just keep going with other executive assistants who we felt had what it took to do what we do, mm-hmm. and. Um, there is an inherent um, distribution of um, of clients and that allows for us to have some security in the fact that we may lose as a client, but we'll gain two, and we may lose mm-hmm. two, and we'll gain one, and then we gain mm-hmm. another three, and then it's just the nature of of the beast. And um, and that is there's this awesome book by. Um, Arthur Brooks called from strength to strength. And I think it really relates to this discussion. And he talks about how you, you know, how you have the ability to leverage that first half of your career in your twenties and thirties and into your early forties into a second act, if you will, that leverages all of that experience and converts it into you being able to pick what you, the best parts of that, that you like and turning it into a viable business, whether that's a consultancy or coaching or, um, or even doing what you do, do fractionally for clients instead of company. Um, and the, the, and COVID really brought this to bear was that geography is getting somewhat irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's the perfect segue. Cause I was just going to say, um, I mean, I remember the initial sales calls, you know, in 2018 with potential clients and trying to explain that you could have an assistant, an executive assistant that was not in the, you know, right outside your door. Um, mm-hmm. And that was for some people that was just like, whoa, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that will work. And then bam, sadly, 
you know, COVID happened and all of a sudden it was yeah. it made perfect sense. Um, yeah. So right. that was a, one of the, I think, hurdles in the beginning um, mm -hmm. hopefully was surmountable. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah. Everyone totally understands that now we can all be remote. It's yeah. totally fine. Exactly. Unfortunately, <laughs> we lived it. So we, we mm -hmm. understand now. Yeah. 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 So that's definitely interesting. And I think there's, you know, I think with the economy, there's probably um, some benefit to you guys as well, like where people say, you know what, I actually probably don't need someone full time and we can, you know, get a little cost savings that way just by having someone fractional or whatever. So that's uh, probably a benefit as well. So good. So, um, so let me just, I was, yeah. So um, what, so you guys, the, you guys had the uh, had the uh, fund or the um, severance package, and were able to kind of make that work. And and did was everything pretty, you know, pretty good from the beginning? Were you able to kind of ramp up to where you were hoping to be pretty quickly, or what was that first starting part like? Well. Um... We're fortunate in that we're pretty diligent about staying on top of our personal finances and mm. having a safety net. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is something we teach or speak to and coach our, our remote executive assistant partners on right. even before they're coming on board. Um, right. Just to be prepared for the ebbs and flow of, of yeah. starting a business. Um, but we had a leg up in that both Stephanie and I, she's the better assistant, bar none, but <laughs> we both have that experience. So it was adding clients to our plate mm -hmm. initially, which was a, an easier conversation than let me partner right. you with someone who we've partnered with. Right. Um, and then, you know, but, but I'm not going to shy away from the fact that there were ups and downs. There's always ups mm -hmm. In the business and that's what stephanie's really good at keeping an eye on the the horizon and we're doing the right thing clients have been with us longer than five years at this mm -hmm. point and if we're serving those clients like that and they're staying with us that long there has to be others out there and i think right. that's one of the reasons we want to have these conversations with people like you and your audience just to let people know that there is there is a, a real option other than a virtual assistant, which is a little bit different of a breed than we are, yeah. um, that really does provide that high level support that we do on a daily Monday through Friday, nine to five basis. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. And I think that's kind of great that there's, you've got kind of the both sides of that coin. Like it's people that you, who are doing the work for you as executive assistants, but then also getting connected with those people who need those services. And so that's, that's really, that's really great. And I think it's huge. That is great information for anyone starting a business is just having that cushion and having that really, um, that really discerning eye on your finances. Cause I think it's, that's a huge thing that I didn't expect either. Just, you know, you kind of, all of a sudden you get used to this level of, of client work and then, you know, some, something happens and it's like, whoa, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta make sure we're paying the bills this month. <laughs> so I, I um, said just the other day, like, um, remember when I would say, you know, when worse, co if worse comes to worse, I can just go back to work for someone else, you know, like that yeah, would be yeah. the worst case scenario. Yeah. But, um, no, you're absolutely right. When you're used to being an employee and having more of that stability. Um, right. It's, it's something that you, you have to adjust to. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's still occasions where I'm like, that's it. I'm going to go on LinkedIn, look for a job. <laughs> I've been, I've been doing my, my, I've been working for myself for 14 years now. And I, still, <laughs> every once in a while. it like, doesn't go away. It, it really <laughs> doesn't. And, and that is the one thing that I was not aware of when I was working full-time for an employer was yeah. that it, the grass always looked greener like oh they're running their own business and, oh man wouldn't it be amazing to do that listen yep. it is amazing but is. the inherent stress that even when things are well 
you can yeah. still say to yourself, well, that's it. I'm just going to go to LinkedIn and find a job. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think that I didn't foresee that. No. Yeah. It is funny. And it is funny that it, it doesn't go away, but what, I mean, the funny thing is too, is that every once I get over there and I'm like, what am I doing? This is the, I can't, I'm unemployable at this point. <laughs> yeah. We, we use that word as well. <laughs> so, um, so that, that is great. That is great. So I want to get into this a little bit about like what your, um, people do, what they can do for, for your clients. Um, and kind of talk a little bit about that, like, um, how, how you help basically how you help your clients. We really look at a, at an, a, 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 a great executive assistant as being a chameleon. Um, you know, they really are industry agnostic as well as principal agnostic. Um, if they're going into an industry that they're not familiar with, they're going to get smart on it really quickly. Um, and they're going to meet their principals, their clients, where their client is in mm -hmm. terms of where's the need is the calendar triple booked all over the place is the email inbox got 50,000 unread emails. Mm -hmm. Um, are they losing track of, of to-do lists? items that they need to do? Is there nobody that any of their direct reports can go to, to get a quick answer as opposed to getting bogged down, um, mm -hmm. all of those requests. So it's really about meeting them where they are in mm -hmm. a general sense. We use the five pillars that we outlined in our book, which are being a business partner, a chief of staff, a project manager, an assistant slash scheduler, and a personal assistant. So anything we can do to take something off of a client's plate, keep something from getting on that plate, being that single point of contact and handling those tasks that are repeatable, that need to get done by someone and the CEO can find themselves doing it. And then mm -hmm. you're like, why am I doing this? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, I, does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and we didn't even, I didn't, I forgot to even mention your book. It is the 29 hour work day, um, which to me sounded horrible, like, but, but I love the tagline is what it helps the high, a uh, high performers guide to leveraging your EA, your executive assistance assistant. And so I love that idea too, or just the whole idea of just getting so much more done in a day and, and all of that. So yeah, the, it, <laughs> you know, it's, like the opposite of the four hour work week, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was the thought process yeah. behind picking that title, which yeah. happened really quickly in about a 45 minutes. Um, but I don't know it, it, our five performance multipliers give you back five hours in your day. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. make it non-scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, so yeah, so, um, and uh, did you write the book together? It, it looks like it's just, um, I mean, did you, uh, what was that process like writing a book together? Oh, uh, well, so, uh, funny that you ask. So we, uh, we leveraged, um, a publishing company called Scribe Media. Mm -hmm. And so we worked with an author, um, and, uh, a scribe, she, uh, a scribe I'm sorry. She yeah. was, um, she really was our, our shepherd through the process. And we actually did 10 two hour interviews over the span of like 10 weeks and wow, talk about a lot of together time. Um, it was couples therapy wrapped in. It was, one. it was, it was so funny. It was, it was like the newlywed game, like these questions, you know, and you're like, wow, I never knew that about you. And, um, it was it was a great process. I I actually do write. I, I I've written about twelve screenplays and published a graphic novel. And I know how hard the process is. Right. And so the idea of leveraging a a referee, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. a a a guide um, who would pull this out of us um, was enticing. And mm. we have nothing but good things to say about the process and the company and how everything was handled. Um, mm -hmm. we'll totally use them again if we wanted to put ourselves through that. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, not in the near term. Um, <laughs> yeah. right. That's, that's More. how we got it done. It, I mean, yeah. 
I don't think we would have gotten it done if we were running the business and and writing it ourselves straight right. up um, and right. going through the whole process. It just would have been, it wouldn't have been Impossible. possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, that's awesome. And congratulations on that. That's a, that's a feat in itself. I, I know how that, that can go and uh, to, and I, I can't imagine, yeah, having to, work together on that that is also a, f a wonderful feat and yes, probably yes, thank you <laughs> uh so um yeah when i was when we were co-authoring the facebook marketing all in one for dummies book we each just had chapters by ourselves so that was actually a little bit easier in in a certain way yes. <laughs> yeah so yeah so talk about the how you divide up the work that you are having to do is there are there clear kind of roles, boundaries, are you, you know, do did you, did those run through adjustments as you um, learn to work together? Uh, yes. Um, I think that uh, Ethan focuses more on the sales side of the business, um, which is great. He's, he's very talented at that. Um, and I, I focus more on the operations of the business and then also focus on the more of the family stuff um mm -hmm. so that's um keeping everything alive in the house yes that's <laughs> something I, it's the unpaid work you know but uh, but just as important or if not more important um than the yeah <laughs> so um but that i mean that took some time for us to arrive at a good a good working balance and it's again mm -hmm. back to just communicating and always right. being ready to we're not yeah evaluate that and we, right. we don't really differentiating between personal and work is it's such a gray line and it mm -hmm. and we both still have clients directly so right. it's not like we aren't walking the walk um yeah we do have clients um i've been with my clients for five years and mm -hmm. you're going at three or four with yours and um, I, obviously our goal is to dissipate that as time goes by. Um, but in terms of having the bird's eye view of, of what it's like to directly assist billionaires, um, Stephanie is bar none, the best assistant I've ever seen in that role. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that experience, um, is so invaluable to what we do. And how we work through problems, because it's a person to person business. You don't run a person to person business without problems. Um, right. And so um, she definitely wears the CEO hat and um, I handle more of the sales conversations. And we're really excited right now that we're launching a new side of the business, which is a training program um, for executive assistants. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is about um, showing them how to position themselves and prepare themselves to make that second half of their career transition to working for clients instead of bosses or levering up on their current role and, and how to do that. And what's really interesting is that both Stephanie and I have deep experience on the corporate side and now mm -hmm. we have deep experience on the, on the entrepreneurial side, if you will. Right, and and right. so we're hoping that um, no, we're confident that's going to go really well. <laughs> that's great. I know. Sometimes I always, words are important, right? Are. <laughs> to our in our universe. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Our mindset, universe, all of that. It's it's amazing how uh, how that can change and how how much um, mindset helps with all of this. So. So that's great. Well, it's been so fun talking to you and getting getting to know you guys and hearing your story. And what I'd love to have you share with us is just what your favorite quote or inspirational saying that keeps you guys going. Um, my favorite quote is one by Maya Angelou. Um, and I'm I'm paraphrasing. It's um People will forget what you said. They will forget what you did, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. And we definitely consider ourselves, um, we're executive assistants, but we're really in the hospitality industry, you know? Um, 
and taking good care of our of our clients and our assistants is mm -hmm. what you know keeps us going every day yeah providing that providing a service but being able to raise it to the level of hospitality mm -hmm. and that quote goes to the heart of that mm -hmm. that's awesome i love it yeah for sure it's it's definitely so so true and uh, especially you realize that as you um get to midlife and beyond and you can't remember as many things so so <laughs> 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 So let us, um, where can people find you? I know we'll have things in the show notes with links to your book and your website, but just um, let our listeners know where they can um, connect with you a little bit more. Sure. Our, our website is proassisting.com mm -hmm. and uh, we're both active on LinkedIn, uh, Ethan Bull, B-U-L-L, -L, and Stephanie Bull. Um, and you can connect with us there. Uh, we're also on some other social platforms, but those are probably the best ways to reach us and um, the website to learn more about us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ethan and Stephanie, for being on with us today and sharing your wisdom and your journey with our listeners and um, being uh, inspiring uh, part of people's day. So thank you so much. Thanks a thank lot for you. having us. Mm -hmm. Hope that was helpful and make sure you grab the free guide, Top Tools for Late Starters on the website at latestartersclub.com. And let's turn dreaming into doing.